Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm going to show you how to set up the Ultimate R4 card, filled with emulators and apps. This card setup will remove time bombs altogether, allowing you to enjoy the R4 card on many different systems. All of this will apply to the R4 SDHC type cards, but others may work too. Before I begin, this video is for educational purposes. Anyways, I'm Anton, and let's get started. For this tutorial, you'll need a computer or device that reads and writes to a microSD card, so computers and mobile devices should work fine. You'll also need a microSD card and adapter. Most R4 cards come with a USB adapter, so there should be no issue there. A 32GB microSD card is recommended, as it is usually the highest capacity that most R4 cards can handle. And these newer R4 cards usually work on all DS and 3DS systems. And your Nintendo DS or 3DS does not need to be running custom firmware for the R4 card to work. For those who don't know, a time bomb is like a digital timer inside certain R4 cards. It's set to stop the card from working after a specific date, so that it tricks you to buy a new one. So if your flash card ever stopped working for no reason, this is probably why. Since YS menu will bypass time bombs, you can use a card from any year. For this tutorial, I'll be using a 2024 card, but I will demonstrate that YS Menu works on a 2018 card as well. Finally, you will need an R4 SDHC type card, but also other cards may work too. Other than cosmetics, the gold one is exactly the same as these other ones here. It was generously sent to me by Timu. Timu is an online marketplace, which offers a wide variety of products. They often provide free shipping and my order arrived pretty quickly. They frequently run sales as well. In search of a gift, Timu has you covered with a large range of options at excellent prices. Whether it's for Christmas or a birthday, you'll be sure to find something special on Timu. You'll find tech accessories for various game systems, including cables and practical storage organizers, and even apparel like t-shirts. Just be sure that you know what you're buying. Download the Timu app through the link in the description. New users can even use the coupon code on screen during checkout for a free $100 coupon bundle. New users can grab the Nintendo Switch OLED for just $2.99 and the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom for only $39. Apply the coupon bundle and the Switch could be yours for only $259, although they might be Asian imports. But don't worry, they'll work seamlessly on any console and should load in the language that your system is set to. Alongside the R4 card, I got a bunch of really cool items, including a strange DS game cartridge, which is surprisingly an R4 card in disguise, a headphone stand, which even lights up, a keyboard stand that lights up too, a rug, these cool LED lights, a Switch traveling bag, and a Switch carrying case inspired by Breath of the Wild. If you're interested in getting an R4 card, check out the link in the description to see if they are still available. There are a few different styles to choose from, including the gold one like I have here. Anyways, thanks to Timu for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check out the website or download the app, and check the description for more details. Now onto the guide. Now take your micro SD card and place it into your device. Now the SD card needs to be formatted to FAT32 for the R4 card to recognize it. If it is XFAT or anything else, it will not work. So for Windows, we are going to use FAT32 format, which you can find on my website in the description. To download it, click on the FAT32 format button, and then the image in the center of the screen. Make sure you do have the correct letter, as formatting a drive will erase all data from it, so yeah, be careful, as it probably wouldn't be a good situation if you erased your entire computer's hard drive. So press start, and the process will begin. I also recommend closing other windows to avoid any potential errors. If you are using a Mac, you should be able to format it using Disk Utility, and you should be able to find other formatting programs on other devices. Once it's finished, close the program and now our SD card is ready to go. Now go back to the Anton Retro website. Click Downloads and then click on the link. This will take you to a Mega page and all you have to do is download the package, which will include everything you'll need and does not contain any copyrighted files. Once the package has been downloaded, you'll need to extract the zip file using whichever program you prefer. Once everything has been extracted, drag and drop all the files onto your SD card. And now you can start adding your game backups onto your R4 card. DS files go into the games folder, and all other files go into the respective folders. Once you're finished customizing, you can then eject the SD card, place the SD card into your flash card, and then place the flash card into your system. Then power it on, and launch the card.
and if everything was successful, you should see this menu. Now I'm going to walk you through the entire setup so you can take a look at all the different features and apps and even homebrew games that I've added. Let's start with the apps folder, which is where you can put homebrew applications. I've included a few. Colors by Jens Andersen is a drawing app that takes advantage of the pressure sensitivity display on older DS hardware. MP3NG by Lucas is a music player that can play MP3, WAV, and even OGG files with ease, and looks just like an iPod. How nostalgic. And finally, File Manager by Panoder is a, well, file manager which can help you move, delete, and even rename files, just in case you need to fix something. In the emulators folder, I've included a variety of different systems. We've got NESDS for NES emulation, SNMULDS for Super Nintendo, Genesis with a J for Sega Genesis, Stella DS for Atari 2600, Poke Mini DS for Pokemon Mini, SA DS for Sega Master System, Game Gear, and more, Lame Boy for Game Boy and Game Boy Color, and finally GBA Runner 2 for, you guessed it, Game Boy Advance. But GBA Runner 2 isn't actually an emulator, because it's just using the DS's backwards compatibility. It's not perfect, with glitches sometimes depending on the game and sound sync issues, but you can access settings by pressing the R button to configure it to your liking. And as long as you sort the files in their respective folders, everything should be simple to use, and very organized. Next up, we've got the games folder. Of course those you'll have to put yourself, but I've included two homebrew games, Wordle DS, which is Wordle for the DS, and DS Craft, which is a Minecraft recreation, and is very impressive. Each game should load up and work perfectly fine. And of course, with any R4 card, you can access cheats, which can lead to interesting results. You can find more emulators, homebrew games, and apps on gamebrew.org, which you can also find on my website. Now I'm going to show you guys that the Time Bomb Bypass does work. Now I'm going to swap the SD card from my 2024 card to my 2018 one. First, I'm going to go into the system's date and go into the future. That should be good enough. Now I'm going to exit the settings and launch the card. And it works without any issues. If you're looking to customize your R4 card with skins, look no further than the skin pack found on the R4 card page. There are some by me and even Shaolin Assassin, and I'm planning on adding more. To insert a brand new theme, you'll need to drag and drop the BMP images and ysmenu.ini files, and replace them with the ones that are already in the folder. Once you've done that, the theme should be applied. But if you're unhappy with the selection I've provided, you can create your very own ysmenu theme with Signapic Yas UI. This software allows you to import images, customize UI element colors, and then export it to your SD card. Importing separate random images isn't the best approach here, as they'll look a little strange. Instead, it's best to use a template and design it on something like Photoshop, and then export it as a JPG image, then import it into SignaPic as a full image. Finally, customize the colors of the UI elements. Once you're finished, click Apply Now, and select the TT menu folder on your SD card. Press OK and the theme will be applied, and press OK. Signapic Yas UI has a known bug, however, relating to certain colors in the ysmenu.ini file, which can result in issues. To work around this bug, you can use the ysmenu.ini color converter, which can convert HTML color codes into bit15 format, allowing you to directly change the color inside of the file. The link to it, along with my template and the Signapic Yas UI software, can be found on my website, as I have an entire page dedicated to Signapic Yas UI. Now, some DS games may have errors. This usually happens to files that are corrupted. You may also see a white screen, or a white screen with an icon that says card with a question mark. If this happens, it could mean that your R4 card is incompatible with the software on it, or your SD card isn't all the way in your R4 card. Anyways, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you did enjoy it, and if you did, consider leaving a like and subscribing to see future videos heading your way and feel free to join the Discord server. A big thanks to Teemu for sponsoring this video, so be sure to check out everything in the description. And with that, I will see you all in the next one.